Welcome to challenge 13. I've noticed that some of the challenges are missing for the Reddit challenges. So what I've done is found the images for challenge 13 and I came across three different models. I've got two beginner models. That's the large one in the middle and the top one on the right hand side. And the outside caliper is for the moderates challenge. And therefore I'll split challenge 13 into three videos. Video A and B will be for the beginners challenge and then video C will be for the outside caliper. So let's get into it. So in this video, I'll be reconstructing this image. The units seem to be in inches and I'll show you how to change from millimeters to inches in soft space. The model's challenging because firstly, the diagram looks very busy. There's a lot going on here. It will challenge our attention to detail and our ability to reconstruct this model accurately. To change your units from millimeters to inches, what you need to do is click on view. Then you go down to dimension units and you'll see a little right arrow next to dimension units. You go there and then you click dimensions in inches. To help me recreate this diagram, I'm going to focus on the left hand corner first. Firstly, create a single line, click constraint distance, just to make sure that I start off the correct proportions. And this has to be three inches. Now I can carry on without having to come back and change the overall shape of my sketch. So let's carry on. And I'll just stop there for a moment and add some more constraints. So I need to first of all make sure this line's vertical. So I'll select it and click here, constraints be vertical. And I'll do the same thing for the other lines that need to be constrained now. I'll just double check to see that they're correctly orientated. Now I'll add some more constraints. I'll select this line and constrain distance, and I'll also make that three millimeters. And you can see how that line just suddenly changed. And that's why I'm only focusing on one part of the model first, because it's easier to adjust the model that way. I've almost added all of the constraints, but what I'm going to do now is just tidy up this diagram first. And where, where possible, I like to put my measurements outside of the sketch. Now we need to sort out this part here. From the diagram, it looks like this line has to be equal to that line. So I'll select them both and click on this button, constraint equal length. And now I'll add one more constraint here because I want these two points now to be separated by a distance of 1.5 inches. I'm just going to double check that I've done it okay. I'm going to carry on now and take it step by step. I'll start with the middle part, so a line segments tool again. And then this line has to be up here somewhere. And I'll carry on here for a bit. I'll try not to snap it onto any of the lines that correspond to the plane. And you can stop anytime you like. So by taking it step by step, we're making sure that we can complete it more quickly and accurately. So I'll select this line and add a constraint of 5.4 inches. And this line has to be 3 inches. And the angle between these two lines has to be 49 degrees. So I'll select them both and click constraint angle and type in 49 and I'll just adjust the position of that. So now I'll carry on. So now we have a completed contour, but I need to add some orientational constraints. This line has to be horizontal as well as that one as well. And this line has a length of 1.5 inches. And this line has to be vertical. And this line is 0.5 inches in length. The height of this point above this line is 2.5 millimeters. So I'll select them both and type in 2.5. And we also need to constrain the height of this line. And we're told that it's 2, mil two inches. The next thing I'll do is I'll just select the line segments tool and create a line from this point to this point. Change that into a guideline by selecting the line and clicking G on the keyboard. Now I can constrain this line to be horizontal. I'll select it and click here. I notice that that adjusted the model. I want the distance between this guideline and that line to be 40 degrees. So I'll select them both and click this button here. Type in 40. 
and I want the distance now between these two lines to be 100 degrees. So select them both and click this button again, constrain angle. One of the things I forgot to do at the very beginning of the video was to show how you could reduce the decimal places because we've only got one decimal place shown in the diagram. It's very simple. In uh, Properties Panel, click on Configuration, go down to Digits after Decimal Places to show. I'll click on Change and change it from 3 and I'll type in 1. And then we'll see that in soft space, it's adjusted all the figures, kept them in inches, but in terms of their precision now, uh, they're only to one decimal place. In the properties panel, it says we've got two degrees of freedom left, and that's because I can move the whole sketch in the 2D plane. So let's anchor the model. I'll select these two points, including the origin, and then const click constrain point on point. So to summarize, I first had to change the units of soft space from millimeters to inches. I should have changed the precision of the numbers as well from three decimal places to one. The next thing I did was abstract the model by focusing on left parts of it by drawing a single line first, making sure that that was correctly scaled and then finished one half of the model before going on to the other half. There's one last thing I want to show you here, and that is as you keep adding constraints to the model and the model begins to cheat, ad adopt the correct shape and orientation, some lines you end up not having to constrain, like this diagonal line here. According to our diagram, it should be 4.6 inches. So if I select that now and click Constrain Distance, it'll give us a reference to that line of 4.6 inches. And I also forgot to click and drag this label here outside of the sketch. I hope you found the video useful and I'll see you in part B for the second beginners challenge.